Holly. Hi, ladies. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, one thing we're going to be, or what we're going to be addressing tonight is how to address objections. And um, I, I was just uh, talking with someone in my team today and just, you know, I think that's, that's what people really struggle with, like, because we're, we all get objections. And I think a lot of people think they're the only ones that get objections. But now I know you've had many obje um, objections and, and no's, but at the time, but doesn't, like you said, there no doesn't mean no. Um, but uh, so I just like to turn this over to you, Nada, so you can uh, share how we can address the common Thank you. objections. Thank you so much, Cindy. And you know, if, you know, when people say to me, what's the hardest part of the business or what's the reason why some people stop or their business becomes stagnant is they, they get kind of discouraged when they get too many no's. And, you know, I remember in the beginning when I would get a no, I, I, I would get so like sad and, 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 and think, why, you know, why aren't they listening? Can't they see what I see? Right. And, and over time, I realized that, you know, being persistent. Oh, sorry. Uh, Cindy, did you want to mute everybody except for me? I came up, we were on. I looked for you and see your name. Sorry, I can't, I can't mute everybody, only you can. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I had 86 computers on. <laughs> can you get it? Sorry, I just don't want all the noise in the background when I'm recording, or when you're recording, I should say. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Can you hear me all? You can hear me okay now still? Excellent. Okay, thank you. Um, so, you know, and I have to say, if that's the hardest part of the business, it really isn't that bad. It's just a matter of, of connecting and don't be afraid to ask for help. I feel that the community and the support we have amongst each other um, really help. And, and I'm going to give, when I'm going to use you as an example, because you remember how a few months ago you were kind of struggling a little bit and and you were, you know, concerned because you weren't getting anybody on board and you were talking to all these people and, and, and it was almost like you were talking yourself out that out of that you were able to do this. Do you remember that? And we kind of had some conversations and it really depended on your language and, and how you felt. And, and I think when you change your mindset on how you look at things and how you deal with the no's, um, you can really turn your business around. And I'm, I'm just using one as, an, one as an example only because I remember the conversations we'd had initially at the beginning of some of our, our business trainings. And now to hear you speak and talk about the business and seeing the growth that's happening, I, I mean, the only thing that's really changed, I think, is how you deal with the knows and how you move forward and, and keep that positive attitude and that positive mindset. And you get good at it. You really do. It's a matter of practice. And don't be afraid, right, to share um, to share what is going on, like to share the challenges you're having um, in your team, right? So, um, so just remember that. So I'm here. To, we're all here to work together to support each other. Um, and I'm so excited that I, I, you know we're going to go through this together as a team. Because I heard that Yuli did a really good job um, last week, um, and and I, I did watch the training, and I found that you know some of the the challenges that were talked about, there weren't a lot of solutions given, but there was some solutions given, and so I wanted to go dive a little deeper and have maybe some conversation over some of the challenges, right? Um, and so are you, Leonie's just calling me. I think she forgot that there was a business training today. <laughs> okay, so let's just go through some of, some of the challenges and some of the objections. Um, and again, how to handle objections. So we're gonna go through some of the things, some of the tips, the right attitude, a burning desire, Truly believing in the products. Um, I think this was the part that really helped me overcome the no's because I knew and I know to this day 
how powerful the products are. Okay. Um, and I really want to make a difference in people's lives. So when, when I'm talking to people and, and, and explaining the products and they're not ready to listen, I've, I've learned to say, that's okay. They're not ready just yet. It's because they don't know enough. Okay. So you have to understand and accept that it takes many no's before you get a yes. Okay. And I always like to use the phrase dance with people who want to dance. Okay. Um, so one of the objections, and it's funny, I have to share with you that I don't get this as much anymore. Um, in the beginning, I used to get a lot of uh, price objections, um, but I'm finding now more and more people are more aware of quality. Whereas 30 years ago, people were comparison shopping, right? They would look at prices at the health food store and Costco and do a comparison. But now I'm finding it's not as common because most people have been trying products for years with no results. So now they're understanding that, you know, maybe they have to um, look at quality. And I find if you get them to a presentation to hear about the products, and they see the nail life difference, then they understand that it's going to cost a little bit more because you're buying whole food supplements, not something that's man-made. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's something that I wanted to share with you. So you really get what you pay what you get what you pay for. And more and more people, I think, are realizing this. Okay. Now I get everything I need from what I eat. Um, I always tell people, you know, I know how you feel always because we do, we do know how people feel. Right. And I used to feel the same way until I heard the grain oil story. Right. But when I learned that even the most careful diet choices, many of the nutrients in our food are drastically reduced due to over farming of our lands. Some people might not be aware of this. Um, and who can eat perfect every day? Cause that's the key, right? I don't know about you but I find it a challenge to eat healthy every day. I also learned that most people's digestion is not working properly, including my own. Um, so it's even more of a challenge to get all the nutrients. And what about all the processing, GMOs and additives our foods have? So these, these are just some of the ways that you can handle the objections if somebody tells you that they get everything um, from their food. Um, I get everything I need from what I eat continued. Or you could say, I know how you feel. I felt the same way. But when I took the time to listen to some of the research from Neolife and the World Health Organization, it made sense. It made me realize why I had allergies, why I was always tired all the time. Again, these are my words. You can put in your own words in your own experience. Um, and then I say, I was eating healthy, but learned certain nutrients were not there because of food processing. Okay, so just some examples, um, or someone says, oh, no, I'm using a product, or I'm using this supplement. Um, I, I do compliment them and say, that's great. It's so great that you're using supplements. And, you know, I do know how you feel. I was also using other products when I was introduced to Neolife. And I thought I was doing fine. Now, I wasn't taking supplements. So um, I'm just using this as an example. If you were, um, my mom was taking supplements. I always, I always use the story that, you know, I watched my mom and she never got results. Um, but then you can say, but when I stopped to think about it, I was still getting sick all the time. It was difficult to get uh, reliable information about what to take or how much. Um, every book I read gave different recommendations. And when I was introduced to introduced to Neolive products, I was willing to give them a chance. I had nothing to lose since I didn't see any results from the products I was taking. So I tried Neolife and what a difference. Okay, so just some, some wording. And again, these are just some examples and ideas. And you, like, you need to put your own personality, but I just wanted to give you some ideas on how you would handle some of these objections. And another thing that I use is, this is an article that was in Guelph University many, many years ago. I think it was back in 20, 2010 or 2015. I'm gonna have to find out the date, but somewhere in this, in this article. But what was really interesting is 
they tested several products in local um, health food stores and drug stores, and some products showed no trace of active ingredients promised, and even when the number one brands were found guilty of this. So I don't say the name of the company, because um, I, 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 it's a good idea not to try to, to put down names or brands, but you can say in general, right? And then they can do their own research and see that it's Jameson and some of these, you know, big companies that People are buying off the shelf blindly, right? Thinking, we call it blind trust, right? That they're buying these products and they think that what they're getting in the on the label is in the bottle where it's not always true, okay? Um, so when, when you're talking to people about the business opportunity, one of the other fears that people have is I don't know how to answer questions, okay? Um, now in your life, you're in business for yourself but not by yourself. If you don't know the answer to a question, let the prospect know that they are asking a really good question and you will get them the answer, okay? Call your upline, call the person that introduced you to, the, to Neolife, email some of the leaders. Um, you know, you will find out that you will start hearing the same questions over and over, Okay, and that's what you'll find. You'll find the same questions, and then you'll get really good at responding and answering um, some of the questions. Okay. Oh, thank you. The article was back in 2000. Thank you, Cindy. <laughs> okay. Um, pyramid. Now, again, this is something I don't get as often. Um, I think because there's so many direct selling companies around today uh, that is becoming more respected, but you still get the odd person that still has that, you know, like bad experience in the past. Um, so if they ask you, is it one of those pyramid schemes? You know, I wondered about that too at first, because I did. I was really nervous about getting involved because of that MLM factor, okay? But I learned direct marketing or network marketing or multi-level marketing is a legitimate way of doing business. That is very effective. Neolove has been around for over 60 years now and has been established an excellent reputation for top quality products, high integrity business practices. They have been um, affiliated with such prestigious organizations as Stanford Health Library, New York Academy of Sciences, and the Center for Disease Control. Okay, that's one way that you can respond. Um, or what I, sometimes what's good to do is ask them, well, what do you mean by pyramid? Find out what they feel, because sometimes they don't even know what it is or, or how to describe it, okay? Let them know that pyramids are illegal in Canada, and only the person at the top makes all the money, okay? Companies do not last long when they're operating like that. So you don't find very many pyramid schemes anymore, and we're, very regu we're heavily regulated here as well in Canada and in the U.S. There's different govern government uh, organizations, governing bodies, um, and Neolife believes in direct selling because it's a people-to-people -people business, people sharing the stories and building relationships for over 60 years. The products truly need an explanation. And this is why our founder decided to market the products this way. But if you were to go into a health food store and you see 10 different brands of acidophilus, a probiotic, how do you know which one to buy? When you ask for assistance, do you know which one they're going to tell you to buy? The one that they have overstocked and they need to move ASAP. Okay, I've, I've talked to people that work um, in the pharmacy, uh, in drug stores, and unfortunately, that's what they're told. And I'm not saying they're all bad, but that's the, the way they're going to move product, not necessarily what's best for you, okay? So you got to be really, really cautious when you're buying products like that. Now, this is a good one. Uh, my husband or wife is negative. Well, let me tell you, if <laughs> Jill was brutal, okay? He wouldn't even take the products for the longest time until finally he came to a meeting and said, oh, this is what you're doing, <laughs> So sometimes they have to hear or try the products. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with saying, I understand. I know how you feel about, you know, telling your spouse. I know exactly. Um, I, so I know someone exactly like you in our business. Okay. Um, now, this is where you could tell stories of successful distributors who started negative. They changed their mind and heart the moment they felt good about the products and started seeing checks in the mail. 
So sometimes when the other half sees money coming in, unfortunately, sometimes that's when they realize that the business works, okay? Not necessarily in the beginning when you're kind of just starting to build your business, okay? I don't want to sell. And over the years, Cindy and I have experienced this. I think Joan has as well. Your people that come into this business and they've come from a selling background, sales, 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 they usually don't do well in our industry. Um, I'm not saying all, I'm just saying it really depends on their personality because if they come across too aggressive and it's all about numbers and all about selling, people feel that and they sense that and they end up being like, they sound like a used car salesman, okay? I like to look at sharing meal life as not selling. It's so simple. I just give people information and they make the decision. I share in your life like a good book. Like if you read a really good book or you go to the movies and, you, and you've seen an incredible movie, first thing I do is I tell all my friends, right? And my family. So that's kind of the way new life is shared through excitement, through enthusiasm and through caring, okay? So it's fun to help people feel great again, right? I know some of us have experienced that when, when your customers call you and, and they thank you, right, for the experience that they've had on the products or, or thanking you because their children are getting healthy. There's no greater feeling, okay? And this is what keeps us going in this, in this business. Now, I had this objection just recently, which is under Violet, and this is kind of a cool story. Um, as somebody that was involved with Amway for probably about 10 years and had a really bad taste about MLM, but they love the Neolive products and they have a ton of people that want to try the products because they've had this amazing experience, but, but they were afraid to sign people up. Anyways, we had a great talk and I've got them on the right track now. Um, but you know, you have to kind of guide them and just tell them that new life is different and, and you got to take a look. And, and the only way you'll know is you, if you either talk to your upline or, you know, talk to somebody that's successful in the business or get them to listen to the interviews that Josh has done in, um, on, on the business calls, like, you know, like just the other one with Violet and, uh, and Joan uh, that were interviewed on the business opportunity. So I think we have more tools now to help people understand that the business works just by hearing other people's stories. Okay. Time. Let me tell you, this was one thing that I told my upline, do not push the business on me. I don't have time. I'm tired. Oh, am I okay? Oh. Uh, Nada, I didn't hear any. It's, it's it my computer. Is it my everybody, computer? Everybody hearing me okay? Everybody's hearing me okay, Dawa. Oh, my computer. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. But thank you. Thank you for, for, uh, for piping up. So, you know, when I was on the police force, I was working 10 hour days, quarter of my days off. Um, the shift work like, was really hard. I had very little sleep. I was exhausted all the time. So when I started looking at the business, I wasn't sure how I would do it. But I found that I could do it when I was at court right? When I was at the grocery store, when I was with my family, when I was with my friends. Um, so I realized that everywhere I went, whether it be school, church, sporting events, friends, family, people are complaining either about their health or not having enough money, right? Complaining about their joints or tummy troubles. Um, you know, so this is where it's so much easier to share today with all the tools that we have. So time, boom, you just send stuff on your phone. Whereas we didn't have that 30 years ago. 30 years ago, we had a brains in a box. I had photocopies of hundreds of different testimonials. And we remember, Joan, we used to drive around in our car with our, literally we called it brains in a box. I was spending hundreds of dollars of photocopying to hand documents out to people information out to people whereas now it's like click 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 and they get it in seconds and it doesn't cost you a penny right so it definitely is so much easier now so the time factor 
People can do it whenever, wherever, okay? And there's nobody, and this is another question that my new promoter challenged us with. Are you going to bug me all the time to come on all the meetings? Are you going to pressure me? <laughs> I said, no, you are your own boss. You can do, do it whenever you want. You can spend a little bit of time. It all depends on what you want from this business. We are here to, set, to support you in any way that you need us, right? So, you know, when you're talking to people who don't have time, just say, look, you just do it when you can. Let's work together. We work together as a team, okay? Um, so I just share some of the challenges I've had. And if you, you feel the same way, then just share how you work in the business, okay? And for me, I just started feeling so good. I couldn't help but share it with people wherever I was, okay? Um, and then you can just do it very part-time on the side. It won't interfere with what you're presently doing. I don't know many people. Um, you know what? That could be a challenge for somebody maybe new, moving to a new community or coming from a different country. Um, but sometimes you don't really need to know a lot of people. You just have to want to be able to build friends, build relationships, get to know people. Um, you know, if you're the type of person that, that you don't like to talk to people, you don't want to meet people, you know, you don't want to build relationships, then this business is not for you. Okay. If you, or let's say you want to learn, let's say you're kind of afraid and you're not sure you're shy, you can grow and develop. That is something that if you have the burning desire, right, to improve your personality and to, and to grow the personal growth and development that comes with this business is incredible. Okay. Um, it's amazing how many people you can write down when you first start thinking about the people that you know for writing your list of names. Just start writing. And it's amazing how many people, I would like to tell people, especially uh, from the European standpoint, I always tell, tell people how many people were on your list of, for your wedding, right? When you're inviting people to your wedding, right? It's a great example. How many people all of a sudden you just start writing, right? So um, de definitely is there people that you know, but it's also people that they know, right? For example, Mansuda today was, you know, I got a, a, a WhatsApp from somebody in Tanzania. I don't know anybody in Tanzania, but now I do, right? So it's, you don't know people here who know people there, who know people there, who know people there, right? So it's amazing how your list of names can just grow and expand, okay? MLM, another um, challenge we used to get more in the past. If somebody asks me if it's an MLM or drug selling, I say absolutely with pride. If you're hemming and hawing and afraid and you're kind of, you know, worried, then they're going to sense that kind of insecurity, okay? Be proud. Say, absolutely. Network marketing just means products that are shared by word of mouth. There's no retail storefront, okay? It's become, becoming one of the most respected ways of marketing products. There are even courses now at universities teaching students all about MLM, okay? So it is definitely not as much of a challenge as it used to be in the past, okay? Um, I, I, this is one of the challenges, and I, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail with the money back guarantee. You know, don't be afraid if, if people wanna return product, that's okay. It has to be done directly with the upline director, just so that you know that. OK, um, we do have a money back guarantee. And for some reason, they want to return the product. It does have to be done with the with the director because there's been money um, um, income generated already on that volume and the payouts have been done. So it's easier if it's done through, through the director because I just wanted to, to give you a little uh, heads up on that as well. OK. How do I oh, so who do I share in your life? with now that I have exhausted my friends and family. Okay, that's me, right? 30 years in the business, all my friends, all my family are either using the products or they've, they know what I do, okay? Um, so you have to find ways of, of meeting new people. Now, what I did was through my kids initially, okay? School, sports, 
Um, they were playing basketball, football, mom and baby groups. So when my kids were born, that's how I met Brenda. Another, those of you know, our kids were three months old in a baby group and meeting mom. There's ways of meeting and connecting people. Um, Mansuda, right? Over um, a Zoom networking, virtual networking event right? So there's networking groups that you can be a part of. Be careful with some of them. You don't want to be spending too much money. Some of them are free. Some of them have a small yearly fee. So just really research and take a look at the organizations that you're getting um, involved in. Find out what's going on in your area now that things are opening up. Um, you know, take a course maybe in something that you're interested in. Just giving me some ideas. Um, shows and booths, that was a way that Cindy, I know, has grown her network. I, I've done a lot of shows with Leonie in the past and, and Cindy and Shelly Sheridan. We've done a lot of shows. Um, and, and then it stopped over COVID and our businesses grew like crazy through referrals, right? And reconnecting with people. I know Joan, Joan, your business exploded this year. Maybe you can share a little bit about, um, about uh, your connecting with some of the people from the past, because that's a beautiful story. I thought, you know, you shared with that briefly on the leadership call the other day. Yeah, well, I, I did the wellness calls, but uh, really I didn't say it on the call, but I, I think it's just that personal development has really um, helped my business um, in terms of people just popping up. It's, I just feel it's a law of attraction that's working more so than me doing a lot of stuff. But I do, I do reach out and I, you know, I, I feel I'm a cheerleader to my, my team, but it's, you know, yeah. So reaching out, I, I have, you know, we have a goal line, you know, that, that's, not, um, that's not active, right? So that's part of it, but I feel it's my personal development that helped me and creating my vision and every, those things help, helped a lot. Yes, thank you. Uh, and referrals, right? Asking for referrals, I think, is uh, also a big uh, a big part. I've done that, um, especially over over the last year, because we've had time. You know, we're connecting and talking with people, and and um, and I, I do support other businesses like Pamper Chef or Epicure, a Norwex, or some products that I that I like from those companies. So I try to support um, other people. And when they were doing shows or parties, sometimes I would go, oh, hey, Joan, how did you get introduced? What party did you go to? A, a jewelry party, right? It was a jewelry party. That's where I met Mary Ellen. She was sitting next to me, strategically strategically sat next to me. And, <laughs> and, she, and I, th I think Mary Ellen even said to me she dreaded going to the jewelry party. She didn't need jewelry. She didn't want to buy jewelry, but she thought, you never know who I'm going to connect with at a jewelry party. And look, she found Joan Boone. <laughs> yeah. Right? So you just never know who you're going to meet. Right? So, so, you know, if you have an opportunity, like I'm going to a, a bridal shower. I just got an invite and it's at the end of August. And I mean, she's my fitness instructor. We're not really good friends, but we're acquaintances. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to her, I'm going to go to her bridal shower, right? Because who knows who I'm going to meet? And it's going to be fun, right? So just another great way of connecting with people. So if you have an opportunity to connect or meet with people, do it, okay? Especially if you're wanting to expand um, your list of names. So again, no does not mean no it means i don't know enough take time and give people what they want okay and i've learned how to do this and this is what you got to get really good at doing is let your friends who are skeptical watch you for a while work with the people who are interested and others will come around eventually or never it's okay okay so that's the kind of mindset and attitude That'll get you through to growing a strong, stable business. And sometimes you need to back off and wait until they are ready. Things change in people's lives. Okay. All right. Any questions? Or we're going to review some of the stuff that that I you know went through today. Um, anything that you want to maybe an experience or um, something that kind of hit you um with the stuff that i shared today or t this evening um i just wanted you to clarify on um 
something that John commented on. You said um, you don't sell, and then John said sell. So I just wanted to clarify either you or John to say, clarify on that. Well, we, we are selling, but it's uh, is that what you're meaning? I don't because want you to. Jo John wrote that our income is based on sale of products. Turn on your volume, John. You're muted. You're muted, John. John, you're unmute yourself. I was talking about the difference between a pyramid mm. and, and a legal business, right? Mm -hmm. Pyramids are based on recruiting, right? So people come in and they give the money and, and you get that money. So somebody gets hurt in the end, right? Because if yeah. you're one of the people. But with our business, it's based on products, right? Sale of products. That's how income is based on. So it's, it's legal. That, that's what I meant. Okay. I, yeah. I even and consider it more of using products, people using the products that they buy, not so much even selling. Oh, no, oh, e either way, I, was, I wasn't, mm -hmm. I was just comparing pyramids and a legal M MLM. Okay. Yeah, and if I, if I could just add to that too, um, oh, what's that come, Vima. Was it Vima, I think? We, we went and we saw Bob Proctor and everything, Nada. Um, yeah. and, and they got shut down because they were promoting just recruit, recruit, recruit. Mm -hmm. So and they actually got shut down um, by the governing uh, bodies there. So, yeah, and they were generating income on recruiting. That was a, that's illegal in a, in a direct selling company as well so and i have to say that ken when you talk to kendra and 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 when even when jerry was um, was running the company they are so strict at following the regulations like neil i will never get in trouble because they will not veer away from the laws to make sure that they can't shut us down and that's you know when you hear them speak they are so passionate about you know making sure that everything is running properly, okay? I mean, they can be doing things to, to increase sales and, and, to, and to make things look better and no. Even the income are averages, okay? Like the income potential, they can't, they don't give you the highest, you know, when they, should, when they give you the income that you can generate at one ruby or two ruby or three ruby, I'm making way more money than, than those levels, but they give you the averages because they don't want to embellish, right? Because that can get the company in trouble as well, so they're really they're very modest and 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 true. Okay, so that's really important as well. Okay, any other questions on anything that you guys heard this evening, or maybe revive? Uh, Serena, you you had something. Well, I was just going to mention that um, how you mentioned about if if people aren't interested once you've shared, just to kind of you know, just to let it go and that it's okay. And then a perfect example happened um, last week at work with um, one of my coworkers. She heard myself and another coworker talking and my coworker was saying, oh, I, how great she was feeling. And then my other coworker popped up and she said, wait a minute, what, what, what are you taking? What are you doing? Well, we have a Zoom book tomorrow night. So it was just being sort of patient and letting her sort of listen to some of the eight other ladies have their experiences and, and now she, she wants to know more. So, um, yeah, so that was, that was a good thing just to kind of, whoever's interested might be interested, but there's many that aren't and it's okay. Yeah, for sure. And you work, you work in a really good environment. That was kind of like my situation, Serena, where all the guys I worked with, they weren't, they wanted nothing to do with, with me because I was doing this MLM thing. And then I met Mary Ellen at a Christmas dance, a police function. So that's how I got in because she approached me and said, oh, I heard that Virginia is having really good results on the products. We saw her for dinner last weekend and she looked so good. She was so sick for so long and that was it, right? So then Henry got back to work, right? Because we worked together at the same police station and then he stopped avoiding me. <laughs> just, we just started, he had talking to me and treating me like, you know, like a normal person again. And, and, and slowly, you know, other guys were like, oh, Henry's wife is taking the products now. And, you know, so you just never know. So you gotta be patient and just sometimes let things 
gradually happen, right? And you can't be sound desperate and, right? So that's really important as well. Anybody else? Any, again, just examples or stories or? Uh, yes, when? Probably one of the biggest things that happens to me is um, I get all fired up. I finally talk to somebody and it's, it's going well and they give me their information. I actually have started handing my phone to them with my contacts open so they can fill it all in. So I don't make any mistakes. I don't make a big deal about getting all the little details. I let them give me, I ask for their email and their phone number and their name first and second. That's all I ask for. Some of them fill in more than that. Some of them leave out one of the items and, you know, you wish you had the phone number, but you don't. But um, so it sounds like it's going good. And I've, I've, I've said to them that um, I'll send you, you know, some starting information. So I write them a nice email telling, you know, just reminding them where we met. And, uh, and then this is what I'm sending you today. Um, could you get back to me and let me know when you'll be able to look at it? Because I'd like to call you and talk to you after that. So I might need your phone number, too, if I don't have it. So I'll say things like that. Nothing. So I don't know. I, that happens so many times to me. I get nothing back. It's like I've been blackballed. I don't know what to call it, but it's and just you know, like I've fallen that's, off the face of their world. That's another example of going through a lot of no's to get that yes, especially because th these are strangers, right? These are people that you've yes. just met. That's yeah. Right. So, and, and that's a little harder. That's why it's a little harder when you're dealing with people that you haven't really built a relationship with yet okay um but don't give up because i'm going to give you an example one of my mom's referrals i contacted her for like four months and every time i she wouldn't respond she wouldn't respond finally i sent her i think i left her voice messages and then finally she emailed me and said, Nada, I'm, I'm just really busy, but I am interested. Don't give up on me. And that was like months later, right? And then I think a couple months passed again. I was just, I said to my mom, I said, mom, she's not interested. I'm, I'm not calling her again. I'm, that's it. I'm done, right? <laughs> Doesn't she phone me and say, okay, I'm really busy. She ran a really big business in Bolton. And she worked long hours and didn't have time for anything and said, the only way that I can do this, if you come to my office at five o'clock when when I shut down, I'm going to keep my employees there. I want you to come and do a presentation for me and my employees. And then, and she bought 500 points that night, that day, and they buy products every month. And it's been like 20 years. So you never know when. So you just got to keep that, that open mind and that language. Remember, Joan was talking about the language and the the positive energy and, and focus on all the good and just let that go and more good will come and people will start to, to come. Okay. And you've had that happen, right? You've had quite a few people, you know, join your team recently. So in customers and you're talking about some, you know, possible promoters. So you got to just keep that positive energy going. Okay. Um, I uh, agreed when what you said, absolutely right. But I, I have many, to be honest with you, I have many, even I have given a sample product to give them. They asked me and I gave them and all. Um, they don't even pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. I, I spoke exactly like you and I met um, here, that, this, everything, but zero. However, I let it go. I, yeah. I my own experience, I, I even told Nada, many people won't even pick up uh, it happened two days back for me. She mm -hmm. was talking about the product and everything. She was like a friend, like a friend, friend, like this. When I call her, she didn't even pick up the phone. Answering machine is going on. But I yeah. let go. But I That's got right. another person, know, another unknown person who wants to sign up. Thing. So I, I personally, I have come across law when so. Mm -hmm. it, and that's where the number game comes in. You just got to just keep on trucking. And I'm going to maybe close with a final story and a final scenario is, um, remember I told you I've done a lot of booths. And when you do those booths, I know Cindy knows, oh my gosh, you're like, some of you get 50 contacts, right? And that whole day you spend or the whole weekend with, you know, nobody gets back to you, right? 
but Cindy is the at, at, at being consistent. Oh my gosh. Constantly calling, emailing, following up, following up, following up. And it's interesting because Dala joined a networking group and connected with a lady. And, and Dala asked me if I would, you know, help to get her on board. And I connected with her and I went to go put her name in my computer and doesn't her name pop up. I already have her as a contact from a show I did 15 years ago in Kitchener. So I was like, anyway, so she got her in a motorcycle on the weekend, drove out to my house to pick up some sample packs. Dala already had signed her up as a member, but she just wanted to connect. We spent two hours and the connection, I think that's the key, right? Is tr somehow you got to get that connection. And she's so grateful that she's come back. And again, like I did, she wouldn't come on board 15 years ago, but timing, she was ready and open, right? So you just never know. Okay. And that's why you just got to keep on going through the numbers, keep on trucking and, and just go from there. Okay. Um, I will tell also as uh, my me, I'm at uh, the beginning, I was sad. Like, oh, why it happened? Why? Now, let it go. That's right. <laughs> be honest, I got uh, a few, uh, one member from New York. He signed up. Uh, I, I, I get the help from uh, my, um, from the head office uh, from New York. He wants uh, um, detox, tea, and four vitality pack. So uh, I did sign up uh, yesterday or two days. The person wanted uh, the product. She didn't even answer me. But there's other one came to my line and I sign up. So I, I, but I never know. Never know. That's but right. You I, never know. You just uh, never know. I, I personally take it in my heart. Oh my God, what happened to me? Why? <laughs> Why? But my children and my husband said, forget about that. Come on, go on your life. <laughs> So I do that. So when I, I agree, I agree with you. Um, but I think we we, sh we should let it go. Whatever it comes, be consistent. That's why I, yeah. I I learned from myself. That's right. I told Nada yesterday or two days back. She was my good friend, Nada. She was everything okay, but she didn't even pick up the phone. I even called yesterday. That's okay. No, she'll, no, she'll watch you for a while. She'll watch you for a while. And eventually she's going to want to be a part of what you're doing. <laughs> you just got to be patient. Just got to be patient. I definitely take your advice. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. I'm not discouraged. I want to make sure you understand that. I'm not discouraged. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah. You're, just sharing, you're sharing an example. Yeah. I feel just bamboozled. You know, I thought, gee, I really thought, I really thought this person was real, but they're not. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, you are right. And, my and, we all, and when we all go through it, and that's why this is a safe, and it's important for our new promoters to understand that we all go through that. We all go through that. I and we've that. all, right? Yeah. And we've I all persevered. That. We've all persevered. Cindy? I, I think that was a great example, Wynn, because, uh, yeah, like Nana said, I have spent many, an hour, many hours trying to follow up with people and, and so, you know, and sometimes, yeah, you don't get anything, but, um, and quite often you don't get anything or they won't call you back or, and it's the people that you thought for sure were so interested. It's the person that you, you know, didn't have any thought that they were, just like myself, I think with now your aunt Noreen, she gave up on me. I think she was giving up on me. So <laughs> yeah <laughs> one uh, one uh, one thing no 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 one yes will come yes yeah wait for well it. you know what i have to say though gord who is my uplines upline upline i could say that enough times when he tried getting me on the products i said no way to flow no way no way no way i'm not doing it and you know what he did this is you're, you're gonna this is a, I, I, some of you know this story he said you want to date my sister he goes i want to can you stop me up with your sister he said to me i'm like what i said why he goes oh you got a sister I, you know i, I want to date he goes and i'm gonna rent a limo and i'm gonna take all you guys out to the most expensive restaurant i'm gonna buy the most expensive wine and we're gonna have a blast she, he goes i need more write-offs is what he said to me. And I get to write the whole dinner off as a business expense because I'm going to talk about Neil Life to you guys. And I'm like, oh gosh. And then <laughs> Flo goes, let's just do it. It's going to be fun. So sure enough, he got a limo. I told my sister, I said, Dana, so just date, just 
let's go on a date with this guy once. Like, let's just do it and see what happens, right? He picked us up in this limo, took us to this beautiful French restaurant in Mississauga. The food, the fish, he ordered the best of the best, okay? And then the wine came and he was like, and then you know what he does? He takes out his vitamin box. We call it a tackle box, full of vitamins. He passes it around the table. Take this, take this, take the enzymes, take this. This is good for your stomach. This is good. And we're like looking at him. And, and, and the only reason why I took some of the stuff because I trusted Flo, right? I'm like, okay, this is crazy, right? And Jill's like, I'm not taking this stuff. And I'm, you know, so we're taking a couple of vitamins. He goes, now I can write this off because I talked about vitamins. <laughs> oh gosh. So he takes us down. I'm serious. He was crazy. Takes us downtown Toronto. Doesn't the, the limo get a flat tire? Anyways, long story short, eventually the tire was fixed. We get back. My sister wanted nothing to do with this guy. But it, it was interesting how he did it. Like, it was so bizarre. And then because I trusted Flo, right, again, that relationship, that trust factor, I decided to try the products. But I had, but I had Al come to my home and do a presentation. So do you see what I mean? Like, he was so persistent. And getting me to try the products, right? And that's how we did it to show us that you can write things off as a business by and, and by sharing vitamins with people. So it was, yeah. Anyways, I don't know if you guys know that. Anybody not know that story? Lynn, did you know that story with Gord? Never heard that? Yeah. No, me. <laughs> yeah, so we're living in Brampton because my because Flo and Robin were my neighbors. Our houses were attached, and she was a flight attendant. And we became really good friends. We were walking together every day. We built, we built a really good friendship. And the only reason why I went out for dinner is because I trusted her. I didn't trust Gord too much. But anyways, that's kind of how it happened. Can I add something, Nada? Yes. Uh, when we talk about, you know, all the no's, uh, I think we can sort of examine them as well, too. We know you, we will get the no's. But if you use the, the one we talked about, activity, skill, and attitude, so mm -hmm. we can you know, examine it as well, because it's a learning process, right? We come to right. sessions, so always look at you having the, added, the activity, but then the skill, right? Skill and attitude, like the posture. What, what's our posture like when, we, when we're doing it? Just food for thought. Yes. Right? Thank you. you. Know, yeah, we have the yes. nose, of course. No matter what you do, something you get the nose. But let's, let's examine it as well, those areas. That's right. Other thing I will tell, um, let's not take it personal. I think uh, other thing we um, uh, have to tell, uh, like, you no, know, by myself, I tell, shouldn't be, I shouldn't take personal. Sometimes it's right. hard for us. I think. Yeah. That you can't then, take things personally. Right. That's, That's right. right. Exactly. I, I learned it from myself. I don't know about them. Maybe this is advice from me. Yeah. Can't think, take things personally. Wow. That's why we're here to get team. We support each other. Right. We, you know, if you have to call your upline and, you know, say you're upset about something, that's okay. That's what we're here for. We're here to share, to talk, to get it, get through this, but there's a lot of good things to share. Right. And that's what we got to focus on is all the good that's happening um, in our businesses and the yeah. impact we're making on people's lives. And, you know, the, the quality of health that people are going to achieve, you know, when they do seriously take a look and take the products consistently. Right. So anyways, I want to thank you so much. Cindy, do you want to stop the, stop the recording? Thank you everybody for joining us.